G'day everybody, where's Wally here? Hey, so today Adam releases a video about rockets not working in the vacuum of space. Well, I'm playing a recent video by Astronomy Live showing the CRS-29 that he himself shot, and it was just the other day. And Adam, just take note that this beautiful display is happening at around 100 kilometers above the ground. And we all know that there is almost no air pressure at that altitude. It's so close to the vacuum of space that it's practically the same thing. Note also that we have two rockets pointing their exhausts at one another. Just look at how they interact in an amazing show of ionized gas as it expands rapidly to fill the vacuum around it. And note also how well both rockets are performing. By that I mean they're working in a vacuum of space. Now, what did Adam want to show us again? Oh, quick sidebar. One of the Andrew Johnstons asked Adam for a link to his original source, and Adam kindly said, nope, and blocked Andrew. So we know yet again that Adam is hiding something. Let's watch and see what Adam wants to show us, and then let's watch what Adam didn't want his followers to see. This is always good fun. Take it away, Adam. Well, let's talk demonstrable reality in space. Well, rockets don't work in a vacuum. Hate to break it to you. And here's a practical reference highlighting that fact. We've got a rocket in a vacuum chamber. We're going to see it expel its gas here in a minute as it attempts to move and prove rockets can fly in a vacuum. The problem is, as we can see from the footage, or we're gonna, this rocket doesn't move whatsoever until the gas is being expelled by it start pushing off the walls of the vacuum chamber. There are no walls in so-called outer space. Well, that was some class A derp there, Adam. Firstly, the stream of the exhaust that you first see is tiny, and the rocket hasn't properly ignited yet at that stage. But when it does, look how it goes. Now, let's watch the rest of the Action Lab video and see which bits Adam left off. I'm just going to put the flash paper inside the syringe and then glue the plunger so it can't come out, so the pressure can build up. Okay, got it hanging in there, completely suspended. So after it's glued, the only way the gas can come out is through the tip of the syringe. Once the gas starts pouring out, it should send the syringe flying in the opposite direction. Now let's try to ignite it by just holding our laser in one spot. Whoa, <laughs> holy cow, that generated a lot of force. Once the rocket took off, it smashed in the wall just into a million pieces. That's so cool. So let's try a little bit bigger syringe and see if we can do it without destroying the rocket this time. You can see the stream of smoke particles shooting out of the rocket like a laser beam. Since there's very little air in the chamber, there's nothing for the stream of gas to bump into, so it has a very straight flow with little turbulence. So if we were at this pressure in the sky, we wouldn't be able to use a traditional jet Whoa. engine to provide thrust. We would have to use a <laughs> rocket. Rockets not only work in a vacuum, but they actually work better in a vacuum than an atmospheric pressure. So my giant vacuum chamber worked perfect for testing out how rockets can fly in space. So now I want to open it up to you. What else should I use my giant vacuum chamber for? Thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you learned something and we'll see you next time. Oh, well, James, I think I have an idea for who, I mean, what we should put in that human-sized vacuum chamber. Well, just as well, I stayed up late last night watching the Starship launch and I didn't get this video finished because as I wake up today, I see Flatsoid is making a crossover hit and totally buying Adam's tosh. I mean... Is, is, is this... Wait, is this from... Uh, I, that's what... I wanted to do the debunk of that tonight as well. I watched it today because mm -hmm. I was working today. It's good, you isn't see it? the smoke come out at first hits and then it has propulsion just like when i was yeah, talking about cool. with that what's that other video of that other guy mm. yep it's exactly oh, yeah. there's no <laughs> there's no propulsion till it hits the wall there and then it moves away that's it i wanted to show this as well tonight i'm happy mm. he was so picked up on it the first thing i also picked up on you know when he first burns that uh, paper inside there uh -huh. which way did the smoke go up it went up, correct? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> there's no gas yeah. in the chamber. Uh, wow. Uh-oh. <laughs>
Watch this, space. guys. Well, rockets don't work in a vacuum. Exactly. Shout You've out to Level Earth Observer. In a vacuum chamber as it attempts to move and prove rockets. Uh, but yeah, because you literally, this is the argument we've always had. So it's literally propelling itself off of the wall of the container. That's it. That's it. This is gas yeah. behavior. So why don't they use bigger chambers then? A bigger chamber? Why? We don't need to. We can always look up and see rockets 50, 80, 100 kilometers up in the vacuum of space doing exactly this. Check out Starship when the uh, booster got terminated. Just look at all that gas expanding to fill the volume around, which is what it's supposed to do. This rocket doesn't move whatsoever until the gas is being expelled by it. Start pushing off the walls of the vacuum chamber. Mm -hmm. There's no walls in space, fantasy. Nope, exactly. Which means... <laughs> Look at this, guys. You found There we go, see. It's coming out now. Is it already e accelerating? No. No. It only has the propulsion once it hits that wall. Watch this. See world. Of there you go. See, now it's hit. Now it's going to start pushing. Check. No, Rockets. Poof. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> once I it hits the, the wall of the container. Mm -hmm. Of the, the container. Chamber. Exactly. And this is what we've been always explaining to the people. They just don't get it. Don't want to get it. No, it's it. Yeah, it's and just it's dishonesty. It's an excellent demonstration. So, Flatsoid, to you, I reiterate the following. The smoke you see at the start is likely just from the initiation of the combustion process. And there is a number of frames, about 11, I think, where the smoke is reaching the wall and you're ignoring those 11 frames. Once the reaction gets going, the syringe rocket literally takes off. Now, Flatsoid, you too did not show the smaller rocket that the Action Lab did first. And I know you saw it. You went looking for anything you could use, didn't you? And yet that didn't suit your narrative, did it? Hmm. Okay, then you said this in your stream today. I want to get to... Okay, watch this. I'm going to slow it down. Tell me which direction uh, this is... The gases are going. Now he's saying it's see-through, but look as it starts showing the smoke. It's going in all directions, guys. Uh-oh. All directions. Mm. So it's not just pooling down at the bottom like the, glo like the globe is claim. No. Because they say... Because what's the globe's argument here? It's just buoyancy. So when you have the gas, it just forces the, the, the uh, less dense gas up. Now there's no gas. How is it still going up? Well, of course the exhaust gases go everywhere. Firstly, they are being dynamically released from the flash paper. And secondly, they should fill the available space. The point that you miss is that we don't say that the gas will all go sitting around on the bottom of the vacuum chamber. That is a straw man flatsoid. You know about them, don't you? What we do say is that there is a pressure gradient in every container and every open-ended atmospheric system. There is also a pressure gradient. We are all in agreement, Just. Yes, there is a pressure gradient. And that gradient is due to gravity. One final thing I want to add, and I'm stealing this from Mr. 42, who has done a rather excellent job of not only ripping into Dopey Adam, but into Ben Taboo Conspiracy. And he will believe almost anything, that guy. So well done, mate. And the link to his video is up there somewhere, if I remember to put it there. But it will most definitely be in the description, as always. Oh, and further, I see Mr. 42 is still under 2,000 subs. Am I reading that right? Well, that's just not fair. Not fair at all. If you're not subbed to Mr. 42 yet, Please, as a favor to me, go to his channel and click subscribe. Nobody does holograms better than him. He's my favorite. Now, what Mr. 42 noticed is that the syringe rocket moves before the exhaust gases touch the wall. Uh-oh. Let's have a look at Mr. 42. Move whatsoever until the gas is being expelled by it. Start pushing off the walls of the vacuum chamber. Can you explain a bit more about that? As far as I know, gas is not very rigid. There's no walls in space, fantasists, which means your fantasy world of rockets flying through a vacuum is just that, a fantasy. It doesn't move until the gases start pushing off the side wall of the vacuum chamber. Are you sure about that? 
Are you absolutely sure? I took the first frame where the gas starts moving and the last frame before it hit the wall. There's definitely movement. That is failure number two. There's no walls in space. Therefore rockets have no nothing to push off. What magic forces would move the energy back from the wall to the rocket? Nothing. That is failure number three. Now for Flatsoid, Mr. Pixel Peeper himself, to have missed that movement is truly Flatsoid 11 worthy. Well done mate. Now I know you saw it, but you just chose to ignore it. And Adam, come on fella, you have form for spotting the tiniest movements when it suits your narrative. I don't even know what to do. Let's have a look at Adam years ago judging a pendulum in a speeding jet plane. Pendulum swing it, even though he's trying to stabilise it. Pendulum swing it. Swinging, 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 very slightly, but still swinging, still swinging. So Adam can see tiny things after all. And one final debunk for you, Flatsoid and Adam. James did a video years ago with a can of soda in his little vacuum chamber, and when the can popped, the liquid and gas goes right and the can goes left, all within a few frames and long before anything happens with the gas reaching the wall on the other side. Got a light of left guys. And for you guys keeping up with my CNC nightmare and fun and games, here's something else I'm up to. This is all part of the main project by the way. Now I don't need to trim this up, but I really want to. Oh by the way, 0.4 of a mil out of the uh, run out here. So that was pretty good, I was very happy with that. Thank <laughs> you.